Okay, in this video we're going to uh, go over some of the very basics of magnetism and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Earth's magnetic field and we'll talk about why some materials behave as magnets. Uh, the first thing to remember about magnetism is that like electric charges it has a basic rule, the basic law of magnetism which is that unlike poles attract and like magnetic poles repel. In uh, electricity we can have just sort of a, a positive charge or a negative charge but in magnetism we always have the two poles tied together in one magnet so there's a north end and there's a south end. And part of the reason for that is that if we assume that this magnetic field is being created by uh, charge moving in a circle then in one direction uh, if you look the north pole always points out one end of that circle that the charge is moving in and the south end um, puts out points in the other end. If uh, we could imagine taking say a great big hammer and smashing this magnet and breaking it into two smaller magnets then what would happen is we wouldn't just end up with the north pole over here and the south pole over here but we'd make two smaller magnets both of which had two poles as well so um, at least to this point in our understanding the uh, a, a monopole or just a north or just a south as far as magnetism doesn't exist it's always a north and a south as part of the magnet the north part attracts to a south part of another magnet and the south and uh, the south part of one magnet would repel a um, oh that's a little unclear eh? let's say those attract to one another so they would come towards each other where these two would repel because they are unlike and these would repel because they are like so we always have a north and a south as part of every magnet and the north and south parts attract each other and the south and south are the north and north repel. Those would repel as well. Okay. So the magnetic field, to say how a, magnetic, a magnet is going to affect another magnet we often create something called a magnetic field. The magnetic field is just a uh, a, a diagram or a value that shows what would happen if a magnet was placed in the presence of the of the existing magnet how would they interact with each other so if we have a normal bar magnet like this where one end would be the north and the other end would be the south then we would see that the magnetic field goes in this sort of pattern like this doing that backwards. Hold on a second here. Let's try that whole one again. They would uh, come out of the north and go into the south like that. It's important to get the direction on this right because it is assumed that a magnetic field shows the direction a north pole would point. So, and the other thing about magnetic field lines is they should never end. So if we had an infinitely big piece of paper, let's say if I've drawn it just like this, what we would assume is that this uh, magnetic field line would trace all the way back around and eventually find its way back to the south. But, you know, just because we run out of paper when we're drawing these things, we can draw them ending, but we kind of keep in the back of our mind that magnetic field lines never cross and they never end. So what does that mean then? That means if you took a magnet, let's say here, and you held, hung them on a string, and you were just allowing it to uh, do what it would do, then what it would do is it would turn so that the north points this way and the south points this way, and that agrees with the direction of the magnetic field at that point. So it lines up with the magnetic field, creating its own, um, so that the north goes in the direction the arrow points. So that's just a useful tool because um, in many situations we'll have a magnetic field and we want to know how it would affect a magnetic um, 
a magnet a magnet in the future. The Earth we know has a magnetic field. The Earth has a, a little bit of a tilt. That's what creates the seasons. And the magnetic field is not true north. It's somewhere slightly different than that. And what that means then, if that's the North Pole, is that there's a mag there are magnetic field lines. And those magnetic field lines come out of here and come up here and go in there. And I know because the way we define the magnetic North Pole is by the direction, that's the direction a north would face if we were standing, say, someplace on the earth and we had our own little compass. Now, what's ironic about that is we've defined that as the North Pole because that's, uh, that's the spot a north on a magnet would face. But um, what's interesting about that is that if we actually consider a magnet and we remember the general rule that unlike poles attract, that makes that actually a south and that actually a north. And so the south pole of the Earth's magnetic field is at the North Pole. Just kind of a weird little fact, but that's that's what it is. So if we were considering there its magnetic field, we see this like there, and then uh, you know all those magnetic field lines would come out of what we call magnetic um, magnetic uh, north or the actual South Pole or Antarctica, if you will. Now this is really really important because the sun is out here. He's big and he's shooting out these. Um, some fast moving charged particles, let's say something like an alpha particle. Um, and we know from our unit on nuclear uh, that those alpha particles could be harmful to us if they reach us, but magnetic fields will affect moving charges and what they do is they deflect it so that that charge never actually gets to the earth. Uh, that's very important, it keeps us from being exposed to radiation that could cause things like skin cancer. And uh, it's kind of exciting if you're somewhere way up north because that's what creates the northern lights and something that you can see. Last, we're going to just have a brief description here of why iron will stick to a magnet or why something that isn't magnet could stick to a magnet. So if we have this, pretend that this is our permanent bar magnet, north, south, and we have a hunk of iron then what's going on in iron is that the material itself is divided up into these regions. These regions um, have different size depending on how the iron was made itself. If the iron was cooled very quickly or cooled very slowly, the slower it's cooled, the bigger they'll be. But these regions are called domains. And what's important about these domains is that the electrons in them tend to be doing the same sort of thing. So the electrons generally are spinning together. In a normal non-magnetic piece of iron, the spin of these electrons is oriented in a completely random way. And so any magnetic effect that could result from those spins cancels out, and so we see no magnetism. Now what happens if non-magnetic iron? Now what happens, oop, <laughs> try that again, iron, there we go. Now what happens if we take a, uh, a piece of iron like that and we bring it really close to a magnetic field like this. So we're bringing them right up now and there's still the domains that exist. We can't see these domains in the material or anything like that, but they're there. Um, and what happens is instead of being a t completely random orientation for those arrows to exist in, they will all sort of see the magnetic field associated with that magnet 
which says that um, Norths want to be attracted here, so the, so the magnetic field coming in, and so there's the magnetic field. Remember those field lines don't cross and don't end. Do do do. Anyways, so instead of being in their normal, just totally random, meaningless orientations that all cancel out, they will all sort of realign a little bit so that they um, so that they're closer to in line with the existing magnetic field that they see. What that's going to do is create a north on this end of the magnet and a south on this end of the magnet and then this north and this south will attract each other. Now in something like iron, the domains will rearrange easily. And so iron is really good at reacting to magnetic fields and will stick to magnets. And uh, it'll change into a magnet when it is stuck to a magnet and then when you take that magnet away, it'll uh, go back to its random orientation. So the domains change easily which makes any change is very temporary. But there exist an awful lot of materials that are willing to, that do have domains and are willing to rearrange the domains to have a magnetic attraction to a material, but they don't just change easily. If you have a permanent magnet, then what that means is the domains will only change Um, not always, but most often at high temperatures. If they only change at high temperatures, what that means is then you can uh, heat, uh, place in magnetic field, and that will result in the material becoming magnetized. and then cool and the change becomes permanent. Now we use the word permanent loosely here because of course if we heat or just through mechanical energy by banging on the magnet the uh, so you know termed permanent magnetic field can be uh, removed. So basically you knock those domains uh, out of uh, orientation. You make them random again and that magnetic alignment is disrupted and that will remove the magnetism. So that is a very, very brief introduction to magnets, magnetic fields, how unlike magnets attract like magnets, how we can show what will happen to a magnet with in, all, in a lot of different positions without actually drawing the magnet using a magnetic field, how the earth has a magnetic field, and why some materials are magnetic and some materials are not. Um, again, if we want to see if something like iron wants to stick to a magnet, we would call that a temporary magnet. Its domains change easily. Something that seems like it should stick but doesn't maybe a maybe something that wants to form a permanent magnet its domains only change at high temperatures so you can heat it put it in the magnetic field cool it and now it'll be a magnet um, what's actually way more common is materials that don't form domains or don't have the electrons that are spinning in ways that can form magnetic fields and so the vast majority of substances have no magnetic properties at all and you know we experience that all the time with you know things that aren't metals for the most part. I uh, hope you enjoyed.